One man is working to preserve a part of our history despite its dark side. This month marked the 87th anniversary of a 19 year old Wes Johnson's death. His story is nearly 100 years old, but what happened still resonates with us today. It's a story that chronicled in a must read book. News 4's Jacqueline Lambert shares his story through the perspective of the author. In 1937, Wesley Johnson found himself a Ku Klux Klan target. The Klan were brutal. Uh, they were bullies. They hid behind a mask and a hood. And the Klan had it out for Johnson, who they claimed raped a woman, though that never happened. Steve Stokes became so fascinated with this story, so fascinated that he wrote a book. Alone Against the Klan describes Wes as an orphan who gained the respect of those who knew him, all except for Robert, who caught Wes with his wife. Well, on, on this site is where the alleged rape occurred, when in fact it was not a rape, it was a consensual affair. The husband caught his wife and Wes together. Uh, Wes took off running down through the woods with the husband in pursuit. Uh, then they gathered a posse uh, with bloodhounds. They tracked Wes through the woods until he went to John Harper, uh, John Harper Oates' home, where John Harper uh, sheltered him and tried to protect him. John Harper Oates was a well-known businessman and politician in Tumbleton, a crossroads near Headland, Alabama. Oates took Wes in and ignored the demands of the Klan members. So for 36 hours inside this house, John Harper, his wife and five children and Wes sheltered while the Klan outside drinking, shooting their weapons up into the air, yelling for him to come out, uh, con continue to siege. When Henry County Sheriff Louis Corbett got word of the siege, he came to the house and arrested Johnson. Corbett promised that he would protect Wes in the Henry County Jail. The next night, Klan members dressed in white hoods and robes went to Abbeville and kidnapped Wes from the cell. The sheriff is alleged to have slept through the whole encounter. The leader of the Klan uh, came up to the husband and said, you were the offended person, you get the first shot. So the husband uh, took a weapon and shot Wes in the chest, point blank range. Wes fell over into the ditch. The remaining Klan members came up, gathered around, and then emptied their weapons put into Wes's body. They then, uh, two Klan members, went down in the ditch, put a, a noose around Wes's body, and strung him up on an oak tree. The Klan left Wes up there as a warning to others. They guarded his bullet-riddled body to prevent anyone from taking him down. When John Harper Oates got word of his death, he went to the tree with two of his field hands. There, they took him down and then buried his body at Rocky Head Baptist Church. Wes was buried in an unmarked grave uh, here. They didn't put a marker up because the concern was that the Klan would retaliate, probably attack the church, burn the church or something. So Wes was in an unmarked grave until about three years ago. Stokes says a lot of people don't know this story think it's important that he be remembered, that he not be forgotten, uh, and that he represents a time in our community that was a terrible time. A grand jury never indicted anyone for this lynching, and attempts to impeach the sheriff failed. Voters re-elected Corbett three more times.